Hey Blender Bob here, I would like to show you how we do the facial capture for the Tiki movie using Real Illusion iClone 8. So what I'm trying to do right now is a facial capture in iClone. There are two ways to do it. One is with live face, which is on the iPhone, and the other one is using the webcam on my camera, uh, which is this one here, ActiveFace. It's been developed by NVIDIA, and they teamed up with uh, Real Illusion to create uh, this thing here. So uh, it captures at 30 frames per second maximum. So I want to make sure here that my project is set at 30 frames per second also. All right, that's good. Now, what I want to do is to set it up first. You need to calibrate it. So in file, you can go into, no, in edit, uh, calibrate facial capture. So it's very simple. You just go with like neutral face and you go set expression. And then you go browse raise. Next one is brow down. And then uh, bow in a raise. I'm not very good with this position. My face cannot do this. I don't know how to do it. I just don't have the muscles, I guess. Anyway, I'll do the best I can. All right, so now it's done. So I can uh, close this and now I'm ready to capture. Now I will set it up uh, here in the, the plugins. I need to go get my motion live. Now you see, I got two characters here and I got the two systems. So to connect them, you click on the little green dot here. So now I'm connected with the iPhone and I'm connecting with AccuFace. And I get two characters here. So uh, one, I will say for the face, I want to use the AccuFace. And for the other one, I'm going to use Live Face. So Live Face is going to be the second one. Yeah, this is the first one and this is the second one. So now they're good to go. I will record both at the same time so we can see the difference, how well it works. So we can preview first. I'm going to click on preview and you press space bar to preview. So now I'm doing both at the same time. So one is with AccuFace and the other one is with Live Face. Okay, so now let's see if I record what is going to, how it's going to work, how well it's going to record my face. So I will stop the preview and I will press on record. Okay, so now this is the official test. So I'm trying to record the expression of my face using both systems. And I will try to do different faces to see how well it works. <laughs> oh, mm. oh, uh. <laughs> and look, my eyes everywhere, up, down, left. Okay, so I think that's uh, pretty much enough for the test. So now let's see how it's going to work. So I will just uh, stop the recording. Pressing to stop it. I can close this. Yeah. And then I'm going to go back and play the clip. So play. So you can see the one on the left with the iPhone has much more expressions than the one with the uh, with the camera. So personally, I prefer Live Face. Uh, I did many tests and I found out that uh, Live Face was actually more accurate than AccuFace. But Live face only works with an iPhone. If you don't have an iPhone, you will need to use the other system. Let's play it again. But you can always get an old iPhone 12. You need at least an iPhone or 11. Mine is an 11. So you can uh, buy an old iPhone 11 so that you can use the uh, facial recognition system that comes with the phone. You can see that they are not perfectly in sync. That's because for live face, I use an ethernet adapter to connect to the iPhone and that gives you the fastest, most responsive result. I think that I get better expressions on the eyes using the iPhone capture instead of AccuFace. You can really tell a big difference if you look at the left model, this one was captured with the iPhone and look at the eyebrows, there's a lot more movement in them. Also, you can see changes on the face. It's not perfectly symmetrical like my own face. AccuFace has a tendency to give you very symmetrical mouth. Very big difference here in the expressions with uh, live face. Much better with live face. And even if there's a position of my eyebrows that I say I cannot do it, well, looks like the iPhone has been able to capture it anyway. If I go back to the recording, you can see that you have strength that you can adjust also. So you can see I want more expression for the eyelids, for the global, for the eyeballs, whatever. You have tons of parameters you can play with. There are also two settings that you can play with to get a better, smoother capture. So one is denoise that you can turn on and off and the other one is smooth. I'm not exactly sure what the difference is, but you can give it a shot and try it. You can actually see it on the interface for live face. If I raise my eyebrows, I go to the maximum of about 0.75. That means that if I transfer this animation to my character, the eyebrows will only go at 75% of what they could potentially do. And no, I don't use Botox. 
So let's do some testing, okay? I'm gonna change here the uh, global and the browse just to see what it does. And uh, maybe I can turn on the denoising and the smooth. And preview, spacebar. Now I'm doing both and now there's the smoothing on it and you can see that it, it is smoother, but uh, it feels like I'm, I'm losing a little bit of the expressions. Maybe it's too much. So uh, let's see if I uh, play with it live. So uh, smooth, uh, let's deactivate it. Now this is deactivated, so it's a little bit, uh, I, 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 yes, yeah, you see my eye, I, I get an eye, this one, no, it's this one here, it has a tendency to close more than the other one, so uh, if I smooth it, it's going to be a little bit better, but my eyes don't close as much, so you, you really have to play with it, you really need to adjust it to get the perfect uh, capture that you want. Another cool feature is that you can mask some areas where you don't want the capture. So I could turn off the face here, I can do it on both characters, and then when I start recording, you can see I'm only recording the eyes. This way you can do a retake, for example, only on the eyes. Maybe the mouth was good, but not the eyes, so you can just re-record on top just the eyes. And now you see I just turned it back on, and now I got the mouth. If you take a good look at the mouth, if I do some expressions like... See, it's much more accurate if I do it. See, this is something you cannot do with live face. It only works with active face. Uh, well, live face works great for this, but doesn't work as good for uh, active face. Huh. So, uh, yeah, you... <laughs> Now this one works better with actual face than live face. So I guess it all depends on what kind of capture you're doing. If you're doing humans or if you're doing cartoon, uh, you can see here sometimes the face is better with uh, live face, sometimes it's better with accuface. face. It's, uh, it's a hard call, really it's a hard call. There's another way you can do lip sync in iClone. You can turn on the audio for Visim track and this will record my voice and then it will try to match it automatically. And just to make sure, I turned off the mouth and the jaw to make sure that I'm only recording the eyes. This is a test to see how the lip sync will work using the Aculips system. I think it's Aculips, is it? Well, we'll see. So we'll give it a few seconds to analyze the voice that I just recorded. Okay, let's see the result. So I'm going to go into the window here, workspace, and I want to go into animation. Now I get all this uh, timeline that just appeared. And you will see that there's a track here, if I click on the little mouth here, there's a track for the lip sync. And if I double click on the Visim, I will move this out of the way. If I double click on the Visim line here, you will see that I get this window that just pops up and it tried to analyze what I just said. Everything that's in red means it's not sure of what I said, but doesn't mean that it's all perfect. You still need to tweak it. Once you are done, you press the align button and you let it work. This is a test to see how the lip sync will work using the Aculips system. I think it's Aculips, is it? Well, we'll see. Now you may think, well, it doesn't look as good as the other one, the mouth is barely moving. Well, if you do, for example, a real human, if you look at my lips right now, they're not moving that much. That's because I talk like a normal person. But when I did the recording for the cartoons, I was exaggerating because that's what cartoons do. They exaggerate a lot. So that's why. The other advantage of using this method is if you use a pre-recorded audio track. So you can import it into iClone and have it uh, analyze the soundtrack so it can do the phonemes and it can do the lip sync so you don't have to do it yourself. If you want to bring your stuff into Blender or any other software, you will just select your character and go export FBX. You have different settings. In our case, we want Blender. Here we want to turn on the, uh, the, the, the mouth open as morph, not as a skeleton. And uh, then you can select the range. I will select all, so I will select everything. I don't want to embed the texture. All I want is the facial capture, so I don't want to export this character as is. And uh, then I think I'm good to go. I could delete the unwanted, uh, unused morph, uh, but you may want to keep them if you want to do some manual adjustments. So export, save it, and then you go into Blender and you import the FBX. And now you have your character working in Blender. Now, what if you want to apply this to another character? I have my character here, Manathea, and you can see all the key shapes are already there. So this is very important, they need to have the exact same name too. So now we'll import my FBX. 
Now you want to go into the dope sheet in the shape key editor. I select the body of the character, you will see all the keyframes appearing in the shape key editor. For some reason, you will get a list of four animations. I always take the last one because it's the most complete. I don't know why we get four, but that's the way it is. I will rename it just to make sure I don't get confused with the other ones. Actually, I should delete the other ones. Anyways, so a uh, good one. Now, all you need to do is to select your character here and you choose the one you just renamed. And that's it. You just copied the key shape animation from one character to the other. Now, of course, you have to make sure that they both have the exact same key shape and all named properly, like I explained before, that's very, very important. You can delete the other character. We don't need it anymore. So that's how we do it. We can combine all these methods together to get the result that we are looking for and do some manual tweaks here and there. You always need to do manual tweaks anyways. Same thing with the mocap. You cannot get a perfect mocap. You always need to do some, uh, some tweaking here and there. Now, this is just an overview of what you can do for the facial capture in iClone 8, but there are many, many other features that I didn't show. And also, if you combine it with Character Creator, you get a whole ecosystem that you can play with to create characters from scratch, rig them, animate them, do all the facial expressions and everything and export it to whatever platform you want to. You can even import your own character in it if you want. So I would suggest that you go to their website, to Real Illusions website, and you will be able to see all the demo clips that they have in the tutorials to learn more about their products. Another good place to learn about iClone and Character Creator is to go to Markham 3D's YouTube channel. Check it out. It's really, really good. Soon I will make another clip where I will show how I combine the mocap from the hand, from the body, from the face, and bring everything into iClone to merge everything together. It's going to be pretty cool. All right. Okay. Bye.